Welcome back to the next installment of the Reynolds for Pros and Joe's Master Bathroom Remodeling Update Series. In the previous video, I showed you guys how to install a piece of drywall. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to sand the drywall mud once it is dried. So here's my electric sander that I use. It has an awesome onboard filtration system. But I found through experience that nothing compares to having a vacuum hooked up to your sander. So that's what I'm doing here. This is the first time I'm using this type of setup with this sander. And so I have a little bit of trial and error here, as you see, as I'm trying to fit my pieces together to figure out what's the best way to hook this thing up. As a matter of fact, I've actually made some slight modifications to this setup since the making of this video. But it does work out very well in the process that I'm going to be using today. So I have that connection piece adapter there that you see me attaching to the hose. And now I'm attaching the orbital sander there on the end. Make sure everything is on there snug. And now we're ready to go ahead and plug up for power. I'm using a rigid shop vac. And this particular vacuum has a six and a half amp motor on it. And I believe this is a 16 gallon container. I've obviously forgotten something here. Uh, let me go ahead and get this ladder out of the way. If you're not familiar with drywall sanding, it creates a ton of dust. And the dust that it creates is very, very, very fine. So if you see here, I'm in a t-shirt and jeans on this particular day. You're going to see me put on a pretty ratty looking sweatshirt. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I just wanted to cut down on the amount of dust that I get all over myself as I sand. As I said, this is my first time using this particular setup, so I'm not exactly sure how much dust to expect. I have used the vacuum for all types of different uh, vacuuming applications and it's performed very, very well. So I'm not expecting there to be very much dust, but I just wanted to make sure just in case. Now I'm changing out my sanding pad. I had a paper sanding pad on there initially and I'm changing over to a newer style screen pad. It requires you to put a Velcro back onto your orbital sander pad, and then you put the screen pad on there. The reason why I swapped over to a screen pad is that I found that they are a little bit less abrasive on the subject that you're going to be sanding, and they also allow for the vacuum to work a lot more efficiently when you're trying to remove the dust from the surface that you're sanding on, which helps you get a smoother finish from the outset and also cuts down on the amount of time that you spend trying to stop and clean up the surface so that you don't affect it by grinding your dust into the surface. So here's one of those screens that I was talking to you about. You just place it right on over the pad like this. These types are different from paper. The paper ones have holes in them that you've got to line up with the corresponding holes in the pad of the orbital sander. These type of pads you just place right over the pad and you're ready to go. So let me go ahead and cut this thing on. Always remember to turn on your vacuum and your sander. It sounds like common sense, but both of these machines make so much noise that it's easy to turn the sander on and forget that the vacuum is not on and kind of defeat the purpose of the whole process. So I'm gonna be starting on this wall here. This is the second wall that I actually did not show me installing the drywall on in the previous video. And so I'm just gonna start here making some small circles now be aware that in this video, it kind of looks like I'm pressing the sander into the wall, but I'm actually not. I'm just letting the sander do the work and it's very, very fine finishing work. So I'm just trying to smooth out the surface of what's already there. If you look closely, you can see that there is what appears to be paint on the wall there. That's why the boards are no longer green. I've gone ahead and painted everything with a coat of drywall primer. Drywall primer is different from standard primer because it allows you to still sand it even after it dries. A regular primer is not going to sand as well and can kind of curl up and make a huge mess. So if you're doing a repair like this or you're going to be doing a large drywall project, I would recommend using drywall primer on all your raw drywall. It seals everything up and helps you make a clean finish. One of the things that I find with finishing drywall, particularly for someone who's not a drywall professional, is that when you go back and you paint everything a uniform color, that's when you can see all of the imperfections more clearly, and it makes it so much easier to spot, finish, and repair any imperfections that need to be addressed. So that's kind of what I'm doing right here. 
as I said, you can see that my mud work leaves something to be desired to say the least, but without having to call someone else to come and do it on such a small project, I'm fine for this particular project. So I'm just kind of moving my sander around here and just trying some different techniques. I'm having to work around the hose because it is not as flexible as you would think it would be. And I'm having to just kind of switch the location of the vacuum as well as the side from which I'm attacking the wall to make sure that I can bend and maneuver the sander the way that I need to in order to get all of the areas on this particular wall. And so I'm moving my camera down here. You can kind of see where the mud area is and you can see where the primer is just below it. So I'm kind of showing you here one of the little imperfections there that I'm gonna to have to go back and add a little bit more mud and there's another one right there where you can see a little bit of the paper. So now I'm jumping over here to the other wall. This is the long wall where you saw me install that long board that I was fighting with in the last video. And so I'm just gonna start over here in the corner. I will say that when you're doing this type of project, the corners may be best attacked with sandpaper or a sanding sponge. This particular type of tool kind of vibrates and moves all over the place in an unconventional way. And when you're in a corner, you're basically wanting your sandpaper or your sanding surface to go up and down to make sure that you've got a, a clean sand finished in that corner. So I make it work here in this video and you may be able to work it also, but just keep in mind that a sanding sponge in corners is probably gonna be the best method to use. As you can see in here, I've also already installed the baseboards. Sorry that we missed that guys. Once again, blame the cameraman. So we're just kind of going over all these little areas here. The mud is only in the areas where we have seams. So remember that we joined another piece of drywall here underneath this window. And so that's why the majority of the sanding is being done right there. And of course we had to go back and mud over all of the holes that were left by the screws. We're just kind of going back and sanding over those. This wall has also been hit with drywall primer, which is why it's white. And so, as I said before, the drywall primer sands off very easily and it makes it very easy to work with and we're just kind of working through this uniform surface. I will say that when you are finishing drywall, hanging finishing drywall, the most important piece of it outside of or after you have already hung it is going to be to make sure that your tape and your mud is on there in a uniform and smooth fashion. So if you've ever seen drywall guys do their installation, you will notice that they spend a lot more time with applying the mud than they do sanding. This is an important thing to realize and keep in mind when you're working because if you decide to do one of these projects on your own, you need to make sure that you have your mud technique down because otherwise you're gonna make a lot more work for yourself when it comes time to sand. And that's kind of what you're seeing me do here. If my mud had been more perfect, I would have had a lot less sanding to do because everything would be very smooth and it would almost be perfect from the outset. So right now we're just trying to level out all the lumps and bumps and imperfections here. Remember along this wall here, this is where we're meeting our tile shower enclosure. So we're actually meeting up with the fiber cement board that is beneath the tile. And we're had to go ahead and float the edge there where those two surfaces meet. We do have metal edging around this as well. As you can see here all the way to the left, the tile has already been installed and we've got some masking film over all the tile with tape there along the edge to make sure that we don't get any dust all over our finished work. This is actually one of my pet peeves on remodels is that once the work is done, I do my best to make sure that it does not get dirty and require some type of extensive cleaning to be done after the finished work is complete you would not believe how often or how common this is in construction for people to get their job super dirty and then have to call in a cleaning company to come in and clean the remodeled space. Waste of time, waste of money. So I'm kind of working along this edge here, right along the edge of the shower enclosure and up against this window here to smooth out this little area here. This is technique is working very, very well, and it's dropping very, 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 very little dust. So it's working very well. You do have to kind of move the vacuum around periodically, and I will say that obviously running the vacuum hose up to the sander makes the sander a lot heavier. 
and a little bit more cumbersome to work with. However, if you have ever sanded drywall without having any type of dust catching system or filtration system, then you will know that it's totally worth the trade-off to have to push this thing a little bit harder or carry the weight that's a little bit above what would normally be done with a sanding sponge. So this type of sanding is normally done with a sanding sponge, and I could have done that here. However, because my work is not close to perfect, I just kind of wanted to make sure that I could level everything out evenly, and the best way for me to do that would be with my orbital sander, because I don't have to worry about getting tired or fatigued or making sure that I have gone, I've gone over everything to ensure a smooth finish. Another important thing to keep in mind when you are finishing drywall is that a lot of it comes down to a visual inspection and using your hand if you have to. The eye is going to catch the imperfections before you put your finished coat on and that's really what you're going on. You're going to look at everything and to make sure that it's smooth by eye. Now let's jump over here on these vanity mirror areas. So previously there were sheet mirrors installed on these walls and the client wants to go back with picture mirrors or framed mirrors and so we had to remove the old mirrors from the wall which are always glued to the wall and so when you remove them no matter how careful you are they're almost always going to remove part of the finish of the drywall lost my hose there let me hook this thing back up so yeah so essentially we had to go back and float those areas where the old mirror glue removed the finish from the drywall. And so I'm just kind of going over these areas to make sure they're completely smooth. Some of these are gonna be covered by the new mirror. I just wanna make sure that everything is smooth and good to go uh, regardless. So just kind of going over these, you can kind of look closely, you can see that there's four areas. There's kind of one big circle where the glue was in each corner, So just going over everything. And that's the reason why these areas are white is because number one, they never got painted because they were covered by the mirror. And I've also had to go over those circles with the primer to make sure that we got everything locked in and ready to go. Now we're gonna jump over here to this one. This one's not as bad. This mirror was smaller and the process is a little bit easier with sanding this one. So this one's gonna go pretty quick. <laughs> Look at that light there. So. <laughs> don't worry these light fixtures are actually going to be coming out of here and they're going to be replaced here soon so as I sand these circles on this one you can notice that we've got the vanities in already and we've got everything taped off and covered as I said getting dust all over the place creates more work and drywall dust is something that you don't want to have to try and clean up if you don't have to and so it's hard to tell in this video but you can see that there's not white dust everywhere because if there was, you'd be able to see it all over my hands and face and everything else like that. So this vacuum is working very well to collect a lot of that dust. And so that makes the sanding process a lot easier than just using a sanding sponge because a sanding sponge, while it is, I guess, more low tech and easier to do technically, it does create a lot more cleanup. And I've not seen anyone have a way of collecting the dust as they sand. It just has to fall wherever it goes and hopefully you've got something in the room that will collect it like some type of air scrubber or something else like that, which a lot of times guys don't have on large jobs. It just goes everywhere and then it has to get cleaned up. But because of the order that we've done the work in here, we are making sure that we've got all of our bases covered. As you can see here, this is what my setup looks like. And you can see that we've got plastic over here on the floors and everything covered up. So we're good to go there. So hopefully you guys found this video informative. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. Nice and smooth.